take all the lockers. Pion. We're gonna take it all home. Pion. Shoot him up. Pion. 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 I think I just shot the guy behind us. Storage Wars is one of the biggest shows that has been airing on the A&E network since December of 2010, giving insight into items that might have held certain values in the past and providing a good platform for their preservation. The show has seen some quite interesting characters, but today we're interested in the cast member, Mary Padian, whose growth on the show has been nothing short of amazing. gathering fans that remain faithful to her both in and outside the show. Sadly, in the recent episodes of the show, Mary has been missing, leaving fans with questions about what might have become of the junkster. Ready, set, go. Surprise! Ah! I'm going a heart attack. I'm going home. There's gonna be a shootout. Well, the story is a little complicated. So join us as we dig into the life of the TV star. Mary's current place on the TV screen isn't something that has happened by chance. Her beginning has always been a major push in her career, though she initially wanted to take a shot at the corporate lifestyle. Mary Padian's story begins on a warm August day in 1980, in the heart of Dallas, Texas, where she was born to John and Teresa Padian. The family was one that welcomed diversity, with John coming from an Irish background, while Teresa had Lebanese roots. Mary's family background might seem unexpected for someone who would become a star in the world of upcycling and forgotten treasures. But dig a little deeper, and you'll find the seeds of her passion sown early on. It turns out Mary's father, John, ran a scrap metal business, which might not sound as much of an inspiration, but was the main foundation for the character that we all see and love on the screens. Although scrap metal might not sound so glamorous, it instilled in Mary a unique perspective one that has become so uncommon in the current trend where everyone seeks a fancy lifestyle. From that background, she developed an eye that saw value in seemingly worthless objects, recognizing the potential for a second life. It also turns out that both parents had a role to play in building this consciousness in Mary. Mary's appreciation for overlooked treasures was further nurtured by her mother, Teresa, who had a keen eye for vintage finds. Imagine the impact that weekend spent scouring flea markets and garage sales, surrounded by the whispers of stories held within those dusty trinkets might have had on young Mary. Talk of a perfect breeding ground for Mary's future endeavors. Old artifacts tell stories, which form the major backdrop for the values that people see in these things. So for someone to do really good flipping these things, there should be an attachment to these stories and the longing to make them heard. It happens that Mary wasn't just drawn to tangible objects. She had also developed a knack for the stories that come with them, having a background in photojournalism, which was in fact what she studied at the university. She possessed a creative spark and a natural talent for capturing the world around her through a lens. This led her down the path of photojournalism. Mary honed her skills and her eye for detail, learning to tell stories not just with words, but with the power of visuals. This experience would prove invaluable later on when she'd need to communicate the potential hidden within a dusty storage locker in a matter of seconds. Early career and growth. Many fans might not know, but Mary wasn't always in the television business. Her transition into the screens was a gradual process, eventually leading her to something that she cherished, and was truly committed to. With a background in journalism, Mary's early career path took her to D Magazine, where she served as an intern just after she graduated from the university. This was a path that seemed most plausible for the young lady, but fate would later take its toll. Later on, Mary's journey took an exciting turn when she landed a coveted position at Architectural Digest, a prestigious magazine known for showcasing stunning homes and design developing eyes for all things beautiful and understanding the dynamics of taste. Here, she likely honed her knowledge of aesthetics and trends, which would later translate seamlessly into her ability to identify hidden gems in storage lockers. Eventually, realization struck. Turns out the corporate world wasn't where Mary's heart truly belonged. Instead, she opted for the thrill of the hunt 
the adrenaline rush of uncovering a hidden treasure. She started by owning a store in town where she got into thrifting, not minding that thrifting wasn't something that was really appreciated back then. She got into the habit of collecting unique items, refurbishing them, and selling them at a higher cost to people who sought these items for different purposes. The items seemed decorative and appealed to a lot of people who saw them. These were the things that truly ignited her spirit and provided the fulfillment that she needed. It was her activities at this time that drew the attention of one of her customers back then, Morris Moe Prigoff, who had a stake in Storage Wars. Impressed with what Mary was doing, he invited her to join the show. Already, Mary has been prepared for this all her life. So, when the opportunity for Storage Wars came knocking, Mary embraced it with open arms. Little did she know that she just stepped into a career path that would change her life forever, propelling her into celebrity status. She initially came in the season one of the show and joined the auctions. It was in the second season that she got confirmed as one of the permanent members of the show's cast. Storage Wars wasn't just another reality show. It tapped into a primal human desire, highlighting the thrill of the unknown and the excitement of discovery. The show first premiered on the A&E Network in 2010, being the brainchild of Tom Beers. Due to the thrills and promise of discovery from the show, it quickly gathered up followers. The show also followed a group of charismatic personalities who faced off in high-stakes auctions for abandoned storage lockers. It was a show of bargaining power on the side of the cast, who enjoyed the joys of winning a bid and the pains of a loss. These lockers, overflowing with the remnants of forgotten lives, abandoned by unknown individuals, held the potential for incredible finds ranging from items like antique furniture to rare collectibles and even valuable artwork, quickly becoming a playground for the junkster. Not every storage on the show comes with treasures. They could also be filled with nothing but junk. Separating valuable items from junk is where the true skills of the buyers are tested. A slip can cost buyers dearly when they make the wrong deals. Mary's knowledge of exploring the flea market and collecting old items becomes a plus for her. They had to assess the contents of the locker in a matter of minutes, relying on their intuition and experience to determine if hidden treasures lay beneath the layers of dust and clutter. The show thrived on the drama of the bidding wars, the tension as buyers pushed their limits, and the joy of unearthing a valuable find. In case you're wondering how these lockers are selected for the show, these auctions happen when renters fail to pay their fees, and the storage facility takes possession of the unit's contents. Following legal procedures, the facility then auctions off the contents to recoup their losses. The buildup of tension on the show is promised as buyers can't actually look inside the units before bidding. They can only rely on a quick peek through the front door to assess the size of the unit and glean any clues they can about what might be inside. This limited visibility adds a layer of risk and excitement to the bidding process. Buyers have to use their experience, intuition, and sometimes even a good dose of luck to determine the potential value of the unseen contents. The show follows a group of these professional buyers as they navigate the world of storage auctions. Other familiar faces from earlier seasons include auction veterans like Jared Schultz, the energetic Daryl Sheets, the shrewd Laura Dotson, and the bickering duo of Renee and Casey Nezoda. Season 13, which premiered in April 2021 after a two-year time off, also saw the return of fan favorite Barry Weiss. These buyers bring their own unique personalities and strategies to the game, making for some entertaining rivalries and banter throughout the show. But unlike Barry Weiss, fans were disappointed not to see Mary back on the show. Her absence has fueled speculations, being a pointer to her influence on the show. On joining the show in 2012, Mary quickly became a fan favorite on Storage Wars. Some qualities make her stand out from the other cast members of the show. Unlike other cast members who focus solely on flipping items for profit, Mary brought a unique perspective to the show, a little thing she had learned from her father. She didn't just buy to resell. You can say that she was the queen of upcycling adding a little value to make some of these items more appealing than they would ordinarily be. She was the one who saw the potential for transformation in even the most discarded objects. She wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty, 
diving into lockers and sifting through forgotten belongings. This quality was her magic wand with her fan base. Everyone was always eager to see what she would be doing next. But Mary's magic touch went beyond simple cleaning and restoration. She possessed a genuine talent for spotting the potential in seemingly worthless items. To Mary, a dusty old chair could become a stunning statement piece, just with a new coat of paint and a touch of creative flair. A pile of vintage clothing could be transformed into a trendy outfit with some clever alterations and a keen eye for style. She basically possessed the ability to breathe new life into forgotten objects, which was a quality that resonated with viewers. She wasn't just hunting for treasures, she was an artist creating something entirely new. Each episode typically features several auctions, with the cameras capturing the pre-bidding tension, the fast-paced bidding itself, and the moment of truth when the winning bid is announced. After the unit is won, the buyer gets to work unloading the contents and appraising their finds. This is where the real drama unfolds. The big question becomes, will they unearth a hidden gem that turns a hefty profit or end up with a unit full of junk? The show does a great job of building suspense, leaving viewers guessing about the value of the contents until the big reveal. This, coupled with the intense competition amongst the buyers, created a pressure cooker environment. Mary, despite her talent and charisma, wasn't immune to these challenges. She faced fierce competition from her castmates, all vying for the same hidden treasures. There were moments of frustration, of bids lost by a hair's breadth, of lockers yielding nothing but disappointment. Since the show has been on, it hasn't been all smooth ride. Fans saw a part of the show that they didn't know was there. Turns out, Storage Wars wasn't all sunshine and vintage finds. As with most reality TV shows, controversy inevitably arose. Accusations of staging and prop placement began to cloud the show's authenticity. While these claims were never definitively proven, they did cast a shadow over the excitement of the chase. Eventually, these events cost the show one of its most impressive casts, Mary Padian, who didn't seem to be on board with the happenings and the on and off time that the show had, starting from 2014. Storage Wars. Texas had captured viewers' imaginations for several seasons, but the initial excitement began to wane. The format, while engaging, started to feel repetitive. These controversies, combined with the show's natural life cycle, eventually led to a break in 2014. It wasn't just a break for Storage Wars Texas, the show got cancelled entirely. To this day, there has been really no clear explanation as to why the show was cancelled. In the event of such a communication gap, speculations took the fore alleging that Storage Wars Texas wasn't really that different from the original Storage War, being just a spin-off from the original show. In any case, the former casts of the show in Texas were left without any TV gig, and it seemed that they all were up for an early retirement. Such wasn't the case for Mary, who already had a very dedicated fan base due to her unique skills. Her fans petitioned the producers of the original show to take her in, eager to see her continue with her creativity. On seeing how popular she was among people, they had to grant the request and Mary had to leave Texas for California. For someone who had spent her whole life in Texas, this must have been a big change for the star, but she had a fan base to keep happy. She continued her amazing show of talent in California, but tragedy struck again on the show in 2019, following some accusations that the producers of the show had it scripted meaning that most of what the viewers saw was fake. This accusation was made by Hester, who left the show at the time. And the wave that came with this wasn't one that the producers of the show were ready for. They had to suspend activities, pending when the issues were resolved. The accusations of staging took their toll, leaving viewers questioning the authenticity of the show's premise. While Storage Wars eventually returned, albeit with a different format and some cast changes, Mary decided to move on. Perhaps the thrill of the hunt had diminished, or maybe she craved a new kind of challenge, a way to use her platform for a greater purpose. Some believed, on the other hand, that she might have shared the same reservations that Hester had with the show, which had made him live the show for good. 
We are yet to get a clear picture of any of these, but the fact remains that Mary was nowhere to be found on the show, even though she still tags them in some of her posts. Life After Storage Wars Many will be curious as to what happened to Mary Padian after Storage Wars. Well, she didn't vanish into obscurity. Instead, she returned to her Texas roots, reconnecting with the place that nurtured her love for all things vintage. Here she poured her energy into her online store, aptly named Mary's Finds. The events that followed the pandemic in 2020 made it really difficult to run her physical store, hence the switch to an online platform. This platform allowed her to continue sharing her passion for upcycling with the world. She meticulously curates her collection, offering unique pieces that reflect her signature style and a blend of vintage charm and modern functionality. Also, Mary's drive extends beyond turning a profit. She has become a dedicated advocate for Ubuntu Life, a nonprofit organization with a mission close to her heart. Ubuntu Life works tirelessly to support children with neurological issues in Kenya. The organization provides essential medical care, educational resources, and a haven for these vulnerable children. Mary uses her platform to raise awareness for Ubuntu Life's work, often showcasing the beautiful handcrafted items made by the mothers supported by the organization. Mary Padian's story is more than just a reality TV journey. It's a testament to the power of resourcefulness creativity, and a genuine desire to make a positive impact. From her childhood, surrounded by the whispers of stories held within vintage finds, to her rise to fame on Storage Wars, Mary has consistently demonstrated a unique ability to see value where others see only dust. She didn't just unearth hidden treasures in storage lockers, she unearthed a passion for giving forgotten objects a new lease on life. Beyond the world of upcycling, she has embraced a cause that truly matters, using her voice to support those in need. Mary Padian's journey is very far from being over. There are still uncertainties about her return to the screens at the moment. But whether she returns to television in a future season of Storage Wars, or continues to focus on her online store and her philanthropic endeavors, some things remain certain. Her passion for upcycling her dedication to empowering others and her contagious enthusiasm for the thrill of the hunt are sure to continue inspiring us all. But it's a sure thing that fans will be really excited to have her back, as most of them are currently patronizing her business at Mary's Finds as a way of supporting her. It's also a testament to how talented she is with her craft. As to Mary's personal life, not much is really known. According to available information, she is very much single at the moment though there have been speculations about her relationship status in the past. What we know is that in a 2016 episode of Storage Wars, she introduced a man named Dylan as her boyfriend. He was apparently from Texas and they met there. However, there haven't been any updates about him since then, leaving it unclear if they're still together. Later on, fans often shipped Mary with her Storage Wars co-star Brandon Sheets but it appears their relationship was purely friendly. Overall, while Mary enjoys sharing her professional life and passion for upcycling, she maintains a private space regarding her romantic life. Hopefully, we get more information in the future. So, what are your favorite memories of Mary on Storage Wars? Do you share her passion for upcycling? Let us know in the comments below and we will see you in our future videos.